Hi, welcome to There's More to Life. My name is Pastor James, where we take the topic from last Sunday and we create it more of a conversational piece where I encourage you to post your comments, give me your take and your thoughts. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about one of the gifts that Jesus gave the church, and that is probably one of the most uncomfortable and controversial gifts, and that is the gift of a prophet or prophecy, and what is its role in the church today? You know, I find it interesting that on so many topics, when when we look at them and look at it from a uh, viewpoint of the world, they don't seem weird, but as soon as we bring them into the church, it gets weird. Uh, such as when we look at how the world is just enamored with the supernatural, they're spending, Americans spend over $2 billion a year on psychics. And that's not weird. But yet when we look at the gift of a prophet or prophecy in the church, it makes a lot of people feel uncomfortable. And I think the reason is, is because I've seen this gift misused and abused. And it personally makes me uncomfortable too. However, when it functions properly according to Scripture, this is a very beautiful and powerful gift that Christ has given the church. So let's take a look at it. Let's unpack it. And maybe um, let's just take the weirdness out of it and realize just how this gift can impact our lives. My first uh, introduction to a prophet was about 25 years ago when I came down to start Victory Life Church. There was only about 60, 65 people here. And there was a small group, and I'm going to use the air quotes of prophets or prophetess. And, and what they would do during service, I'd be sitting in the front row, and um, during the worship in between songs, one of the prophetess would stand up and prophesy against me. Uh, and, and I just remember one particular Sunday, this prophetess standing up uh, in between songs and out loud in front of the church began to say, thus saith the Lord, which when I hear that phrase, automatically the weird hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Thus saith the Lord, you are neither hot nor cold. You are lukewarm and I spew you from my mouth. And I'm thinking to myself, are they talking about me here? Well, then the other prophetess stood up on the other side and added to the first one's prophecy and she drew from an example I gave the prior week. We were building a house, and they had dug the foundation wrong and had to redo it. And I used this as an illustration the week prior. And so this prophet stood up and says, just as you have laid the foundation wrong on your house, you're laying it wrong on the church. Well, at that point, I realized they were talking about me at this point. And this was really one of my first encounters with the gift of prophecy, and which I would say was an abuse and misuse. And I say that because when we look at Scripture, the New Testament prophet, the New Testament gift, it serves as a function to encourage, to strengthen, and to comfort. So people a lot of times ask me, how do I know this is a word from God? And, and the first thing I do when I look at, is this a prophetic word? Uh, can this be from God? As I'm always looking at these three measures that we're going to find in Scripture, is New Testament prophecy is a word of encouragement, of comfort, and it brings strength, it strengthens us. And so these are the first things we want to take a look at. Now, here's where it can be very powerful in a person's life. This very church uh, and church grounds that I'm on here at Victory Life Church was really spoken about in a prophetic voice over 40 years ago, uh, long before I was ever even thinking about being in ministry or even on this location. And this place that I'm sitting at now in this studio was just a field and had, had, uh, had trees. But 40 years ago, a group of 12 people gathered on a hill uh, during a sunrise service, and they began to worship, and one of the gentlemen there, uh, his name is Pastor Ralph, heard this word from God. He heard in his head these words, and he shared it, and he says, this land that is nothing but just trees and weeds, this land will be used to minister to our children and to our children's children. This was a a a a vision he had, a word that he had that he shared with the others. And here's what was powerful. Out of those 12, there was a gentleman there whose daughter is in the church 
and has kids that have been raised in the church through our children's program, literally that word that Ralph gave has come to pass 40 years later. It is for the children's children. Uh, I remember just 23 years ago, God speaking to my heart uh, about Victory Life Church, and it was a time of discouragement. It 9/11 had just happened. The world, the America had just shut down. People didn't know what it was going to look like moving forward. Uh, we were facing many personal challenges. My father-in-law passed away. My brother-in-law passed away. Uh, we were already burned out and ready to quit after our first 90 days as the pastor here. And we were up at a lake in Hart, Michigan, and I'm sitting out in the lake, and I'm just lamenting with God during my quiet time, and I'm sharing all these things with him as far as frustrations. I just want to quit. And all of a sudden, God spoke these verses to me. Now, when I say God spoke to me, I heard it in my head, and I know it was of the Holy Spirit because I'm not that smart of a guy. And I just heard Luke 4.18 where Jesus proclaims, I've come to preach the good news to the poor in spirit, to heal the broken heart, and to set the captives free. And I knew we were called way back then to minister in a way that I had never experienced before, that it wasn't just about getting numbers in the building, uh, but it was truly to transform people's lives and, and to really bring healing and restoration on a level that I'd never experienced before. He also gave me John 10.10, 10, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. And it was in that moment 23 years ago that God spoke the name of the church, Victory Life Church, there's more to life. So prophecy can be very powerful, but those prophecies, they were comforting, they were encouraging, and they were strengthening uh, so much so that 23 years later, they're still giving me strength and energy. And so I, I think part of the reason why we struggle with the supernatural element of God is it means we've got to give up some control. And it also means there's an element of God we just don't understand. And it's just convenient to put God in a box in a way that we can explain everything. And God is much bigger than that. But down deep, people truly want to have God do divine, divine things in our lives and supernatural things. The reason we pray is we want uh, divine intervention in our prayers. And so really, the prophetic gift is seeking God for a fresh word, a rhema word that brings strength, comfort um, and uh, to, to our lives. So let's take a look at this. In, in Ephesians 4.11, he says, it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Why? To prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. This is the scripture that's called the fivefold ministry. Christ gave these gifts to the church to help equip and empower the church, the saints, to do the work of the ministry. But he did it so that the, the, the church can be built up, can be encouraged as he does this. You know, here's how prophecy can look when it fits those requirements of strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. You know, I, I remember one time Mylene and I went to a conference, and this was probably the most profound example of a prophetic word being spoken over our lives. And uh, for about a year, Eileen had this rash on her leg, uh, lower part of her leg on her shin, and it was very uncomfortable, very painful. And she always kept saying for a year, she kept saying, this is so embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. She quit wearing dresses and skirts because she was just embarrassed by this red rash that, that was painful. Um, they tried different treatments. Nothing seemed to work. Doctors didn't know what it was. And so for a year, she just kind of lived with this discomfort and just this embarrassment, she would say. Well, we go to this conference, and um, there's 4,000 people at this conference. And it was very difficult for us to get there. It was full of flight delays and snowstorms and cancellations. And we finally get in to the city. It was midnight. They gave away our hotel room because we weren't there in time. They were fully booked because of this conference. So we had to really find a hotel um, that was low standard, shall we say. And we finally get to the conference. It's a day late. Um, and we enter into worship. We're exhausted. 
Uh, Eileen's feeling the pain and discomfort from this rash. And during worship, this is what she's praying during worship. She says, Lord, please make this personal. Meaning she just needed she just needed to hear from God. She needed a special touch from God. Uh, she knew that God loved her, but she just said, I just need this to be a personal moment between you and I. And so we worshiped at the end of worship. The speaker comes out, uh, Pastor Jimmy Evans, and he's at the he begins to speak at this conference. 4,000 people, we're there late, so we're up in the nosebleed section in the balcony. And he opens his notebook to preach, and all of a sudden, as he starts, he stops, he walks to the edge of the stage, and he looks out into the crowd, and he says, there's a woman here tonight with an embarrassing rash, <laughs> and he says, God is healing you right now. Eileen, the tears started to roll down her eyes. She could not believe her ears. Neither one of us could. And by the end of that night, the rash was 50% gone. And by morning, it was completely gone. Uh, after a year of dealing with this, it was completely gone, and her skin was just as smooth as a baby's skin. Now, was that word that was given, what, was it strengthening? Was it encouraging? And was it comforting? Absolutely. This gift is a beautiful and powerful gift when it's used according to Scripture. And so what's the first point? Is The first point is this is prophecy in the New Testament, prophecy encourages people. Acts 15, 32 says this, uh, Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to what? Encourage and strengthen the brothers. The gift of prophecy encourages, strengthens, and brings comfort. Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, Verse in, uh, 3 and 4, he says, But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. Those are the three things. Remember, it strengthens your faith. It, it gives you the ability to fight the good fight. It encourages you, and it brings comfort to you. Verse 4 says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. In 1 Corinthians 14, 3, Paul con, uh, 31, Paul continues to write, for you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed, and there it is again, encouraged. And so we, we see how it's used to bring strength, to bring encouragement. Uh, even Jeremiah 1, 9, and 10 from the Old Testament uh, teaches us that uh, it's used to bring uh, strength. It says, Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, and to build up and to plant. It is to build up and plant, even in the Old Testament. But notice there's two different kingdoms. What it tears down is the kingdom of darkness, but what it builds up is God's kingdom. And so it's always going to bring comfort. It's always going to bring strength to us. Uh, and it's always going to bring encouragement. Um, these are the things we want to we want to look for as we welcome this, this gift. Here's the other purpose of this fivefold gifts is it is to equip and to prepare the saints. You and I are the saints. And so this gift is meant to teach us how to hear God for ourselves. You don't need to have a pastor or somebody else hear God for you. You have the ability to hear and to seek God for yourself. He wants to speak to you in your quiet time. And so again, in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, in the New King James, it says, he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. What? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry to edify the body of Christ. So here's how it looks like. Here's how you're equipped Sometimes I think we just overthink what this gift is and we want to make it weird when it really isn't weird at all. But have you ever had that feeling that you should text somebody, you should call somebody uh, to just encourage them? Maybe they've just been on your mind for the last couple of days and maybe you text them and said, hey, thinking about you, praying for you. And, and this is what you'll always hear back. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Well, that's the that's how the prophecy, the gift of prophecy works. It was a prophetic uh, nudge by the Holy Spirit 
for you to encourage somebody, somebody that was just dropped into your mind. This is what it looks like. It's not weird at all. Maybe maybe you've seen somebody and you just thought, man, I should pray for that person. Uh, I just want to encourage you to just offer to pray for that person. The gift of prophecy is nothing more than the Holy Spirit just giving you a little nudge, dropping somebody on your heart to just follow through and give them a text, to give them a call, to give them some encouragement, some comfort, and some strength. That's all it is. When you look at it this way, it, it's not weird at all, is it? But, it? but it's a powerful and beautiful gift that God gives because not only does he want to work in us, but God wants to work with us. And he's just trying to get us to reach out and to bring strength, comfort, and healing to other people. And so we want to always look and realize it's to equip the saints. Here's the last thing I want to give you is what to do with a prophetic word. You know, I've been to so many conferences and people will have a spoken word or a prophetic word. Um, you know, I've just seen people respond in a crazy way. Uh, do not go sell your house. Uh, do not get a divorce. Do not do crazy things because somebody had a word for you. A prophetic word, yes, it's meant to strengthen, encourage us and bring comfort. But listen to me, the written word the written word always takes first place. God will never speak something that contradicts God's written word. Sometimes we can get lazy in our faith and we want somebody to tell us what God wants us to do. When we're called to seek him and to seek him with all of our heart, it is the written word that God speaks. So we want to always go to the written word. So what do I do when I have a, a prophetic word given to me? Well, understand this. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says, we know in part and we prophesy in part. That means sometimes we can misinterpret it. That means sometimes the person giving it, you might be off just a little bit, but but not always. But um, it, we know in part and we prophesy in part. How do I get the other part is I look to the Word of God. The Word of God is where I want to go. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is compare it to God's Word. Uh, I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to sit on it for a while. There's times where things were spoken and it took several years for them to come to pass, but it was truly a word, a, a, a divine word. But I'm always going to look and confirm it through God's word. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test it uh, from time to time. There, there was one time Pastor Dwayne, my pastor, was doing a conference at, at a hotel and at a, in a conference room, and they were taking an offering every night to pay for the expenses. And a guy came up to him and said, God is telling me to, uh, God is saying, don't take another offering to trust him for the finances. So Pastor Duane said, okay, if we do that and the money doesn't come in, will you write a check for the difference? And the guy said, absolutely not. Pastor Duane's response was, well, if you don't trust your own word, neither will I. We're going to take the offering. So there's a testing of it and not taking it as the gospel. The God's written word is the only thing we take as absolute truth. Everything else has to be tested and compared to it. And then here's the third thing I would give you is, is, is submit it to somebody. Submit it to a pastor. Submit it to um, a, a mentor, an elder. Get some feedback. Uh, what do you think this word means to me? And get, get their input from it. We had one young man that had a word spoken over him that he is going to be in ministry. Well, the challenge he had was he was a finance major and he was close to graduating with a finance major and he wanted to go into accounting, but he heard this word and it kind of messed him up. He didn't know if he missed the mark. He didn't know if he should quit his last semester, go to Bible school and go into ministry. And so it's helpful to submit it because what I would have said, what it, if that was brought to me was this, you're looking at ministry as being a guy that stands on a platform on Sunday when really we're all ministers. We're all the saints being equipped to do the work of the ministry. I would say, man, if you heard God to go get a finance degree, get your finance degree, become a CPA, and go minister into that office. There's people that I could never reach, that the kingdom needs people that are the light, the salt, and example of Christ in the workplace environment. And, and yes, even CPAs and accountants need to see an example of the love and the power of Christ right in their own environment. So, you want to compare it to God's word, you want to test it, and you want to submit it. These are the functions of the gift of prophecy. Weird, man, I've seen it weird. I've seen it done wrong. I've seen it abused. Powerful, life-changing, impacting. 
boy, when it's done according to the New Testament, where it is really meant to strengthen, to encourage, and to comfort, it becomes a beautiful gift. While there are my thoughts on this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think of this. I want to encourage you with this truth. God wants to speak to you. If you'll be quiet and sit before him, whether he use it through somebody else giving you a prophetic word confirming that he knows and sees your heart or whether it's through his word, God wants to have a relationship with you. Man, God bless you.